Hey, what's up guys? This is Krishna here. Um, on September the 18th, I published a video on vellum point activation using bounding box and a lot of other stuff. Uh, today, it's a tutorial on how to activate the points using bounding box and vellum. Uh, if you have not watched the um, video, uh, here's the sample. Okay, so that's what we're going to be talking about today. Uh, there's a lot more um, points activation spread and um, on animated geometry and uh, crowd agents, etc., etc. Now I'm going to cover those in parts, so please stay tuned. Um, there will be more tutorials on this, okay? So let's uh, jump on to uh, this one. This is a blank scene right now. Let's create a geometry and let's call it source. Let's go in, let's create a pig head, and let's transform this a little bit above the ground plane, and that would be about two. Now let me set this up so that we can visualize it easily. Create a camera. Okay, perfect. And I'm going to create a null here, and I'm going to call it out. Okay, so that's done. And I'm going to set this up here. Right, let's select the source and go to Vellum Shelf Tools and click on Vellum Grains. Okay, so there it is. It's done its magic and created some nodes for us. And I'm just going to set this up accordingly. Okay, great. And let's go back into source and increase the resolution of the grain uh, where it's the grain size. And I'm going to change it to 0, 03 so that it's slightly denser. And let's go into Auto Dop Network and create a ground plane. And uh, let's connect it to Merge, which is fine, perfect. And let's play this back and see what happens. Right, the pig head is falling and uh, it's crashing into the ground, which is perfect. Okay, great. Now let's go back in a source. Now this is where the magic happens. Um, once the grain constraints, constraints after the grain constraints node. We're going to create something here, okay? So let's let's create a box and let's set that on the display flag and we're going to transform, make it as big as the pig head. I'm pressing E, making this size bigger, slightly bigger. I'm pressing T to move it and pressing E again to cover the entire pig, okay? So there it is. I'm going to make it to wireframe so that I can see what's going on. Moved it to front view and moved it just up above the pig head. Okay. So let's go back in the camera now. Oops. Actually, this is not. Okay. There you go. So that looks pretty good now. And we're going to create a group create node whereby the second input is the box and the first input is the actual geometry. And now we're going to group type, set the group type to points. We're going to call the group name to activate. Oops, activate. And we're also going to set it to the keep in bounding regions and change this to bounding object. That way you will see when we bring the box down, let me just bring it down here. Bring the box down. There. They are your there are your points which are now in activate group. Okay. So I'm just gonna go back and um, reset that. Let's animate this box. Let's click on Alt Translate. For the first 24 frames, the box is going to stay where it is at. And from 24 to 48, it's gonna move just about there. Let me go to the front view. Okay, so that means it covers the entire pig head. Okay. Okay, perfect. And let me create, let me click on the alt and click on translate. Okay, so that way, let me just click on this time and the box moves down after the 24th frame. First 24 frames not doing anything because I want you to see that nothing happens during that time. Obviously creating just a group will not make any difference. So let me create a point wrangle here. 
and let me type in a little bit of code if at group underscore activate equals one then i at stopped equals zero else sorry it's gonna have to be three else i at stopped equals zero now i at stopped is the parameter that it uses to activate or deactivate the vellum points and this is very important okay so that's that and let's that means it's set up right now and it should technically work and let's check it out does it work no it doesn't it just crashes right down okay and that means there's something wrong before i get into the nitty-gritty i want to just uh, move the animated transform over make a copy and i'm going to delete this translate fully and i'm going to bring this bounding box box down just to cover oops what happened there just to cover maybe this is part of the pig head okay so we know that is already part of that group called activate and let's now go back into the simulation and see if that works yep it does but it does the other way around so i had stopped should be zero here and it should be three here and before i play this i just want to disable the gravity and add a pop wind so it looks much cooler and the wind velocity is i don't know minus one or something okay let's check it out yep yeah, so that definitely works which is perfect let me put it back to non wireframe mode because it was on wireframe mode before right so there you go you can see that it definitely works which means at the first frame if the box has some points or some of these points are um, already in the activation group in the first frame and it works but it doesn't if it it's animated and why is that that's because of this node here which is the source vellum node or vellum source node where it says emission type is only once now it's only once means it'll only take it at the start of the simulation frame which is start frame is one here okay um, if you change it to continuous it's going to go crazy it's going to start exploding there you go it started exploding so i'm going to stop it now if i can there you go i have so we're going to leave it at only once but the trick here is to actually do this inside inside of the um, dot network itself and that's the trick behind it but before we do that i'm going to do something different here okay so i'm going to move this point wrangle out of the way and i'm going to make a copy of this and then bring it back in and i'm going to say instead of i had stopped equals zero here i'm going to say at cd.r equals one which means i'm giving it a color when it is in activate group at cd.r equals zero if it is not in activate group then the color red will be zero but before that i want to add a color to make it all black if we don't do this then the blue and the green will be still one it's all going to look a little weird and all confused so i'd rather just do it clean okay so we know for a fact it is red here okay so let me put the transform back to the animated transform so that way we know that the red comes in only after the 24th frame okay so we got all this set up at this level here oh let me just save this actually say this is untitled it doesn't matter so let me go back into auto dot network now before we do that we need to set up a multi solver here in the dot network so multiple solver multiple solvers first input goes into the vellum object you got to disconnect this link and later we're going to disconnect the link from vellum solver to merge and we're going to connect it to multi solver multi solver goes into merge press l to lay it out and h to fit it to the view the next thing is we're going to add a sop solver here where we're going to do our magic and we're going to connect the sop solver to the multi solver and go in there and create this attribute wrangle or point wrangle whatever you want to do but you got to make sure it is 
run over points. Okay, connect the first one here and the second one. In fact, yeah, let, let's just connect just one. Okay, we know <coughs> we need to bring in our source geo. So we're going to create an object merge and bring in the source geo here. And we know it's here right now. Okay, because you could see on the screen. All right, but this dot geometry does not have the uh, color red transferred yet from the object merge. So we're going to do an attribute transfer. And this is attributes to, which is this one and attributes from, which is this one. And we're going to bring in the color. We're going to leave the conditions on default and connect this to the attribute wrangle. Okay. Now, we know that the color has come in. So we're going to say if at cd.r equals one, then I at stopped equals, oops, I at stopped equals zero. Ugh, I'm missing the P there. Else I at stopped equals three. Okay. And that's the magic. All right, so now we got that going. Let's see if this works. There you go, it started working now. Perfect. So that is the trick behind points activation in Vellum using bounding box, okay? So let me go back out to the Cranes Vellum and delete the color so we can look at it better. Attribute delete and delete color. Go back into there and let me just create it up to 72. Start a flipbook and let's see if it yeah, there you go. Bam, it's done. So that's how you do it. So the first 24 frames, nothing really is happening as you can see. And then after the 24th frame, the bounding box comes in and the point starts moving, okay? As you can see, it's coming down because at this point, the bottom of the pig head is not moving, so. Okay, so that's the trick behind activating it, uh, activating um, points in Vellum using Bounding Box. I hope it helped. Um, there will be more tutorials, as I said earlier. Uh, please subscribe, like, and share. Um, and do not forget to click on that bell icon for notifications. Thank you very much. Have a good day.